Alright, so the signal we're going to deal with in this problem is x of t equals e to the minus a absolute value of t for real values of a greater than zero. If we sketch this signal as a function of time, this is what it looks like. This is basically a decaying exponential to both the life, left and right, so we usually call this a two-sided decaying exponential function. So this is the time domain plot. So like I said, this is a double-sided decaying exponential function and we are going to compute the Fourier transform of x of t, which we call x of omega. So let's compute the Fourier transform of x of t. And we're going to start off just by using the definition. So this is just the definition of the Fourier transform of the signal x of t. It's an integral from minus infinity to infinity, x of t e to the minus j omega t dt. For this specific problem that we're working, our x of t is e to the minus a absolute value of t. So we've plugged that in there. And now this is where it gets a little tricky mathematically because we need to be able to deal with the absolute value sign. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this integral from minus infinity to infinity as the sum of two integrals, one from minus infinity to zero plus the integral from zero to infinity. And you can do this for any integral. You can always split up an integral from a to c as an integral from a to b and then b to c. So here our a is minus infinity, our c is infinity, and the point in the middle that we're picking, b, is 0, but we're just splitting this integral up into two pieces. And the reason we're doing this is because it lets us deal with the absolute value sign in a simple way now. So this first integral, e to the minus a absolute value of t, this is an integral over times negative. So these are only negative times. So when I plug in a negative t into the absolute value sign, I'm always going to have a positive value, so I'm always going to have an e to the minus a t. So when I simplify this, I'm going to write it as e to the at because time is always negative. So I will always get an e to the negative quantity. Similarly, when I simplify the second integral, which is an integral from 0 to infinity, every value of t on that integral is positive. So when I plug it into the absolute value sign, I get a positive number. So I always have some e to the minus at again. So here, when I simplify the absolute value sign, I actually have e to the minus at, because t's are always positive in this integral, resulting in a e to the minus at term. So now I have it down to just two integrals. So I can go ahead and use the property of exponentials, and instead of a product of two e's, I can write it as e to the sum of their arguments, and I can do that for both integrals. So now we just have two integrals to work. The integral from minus infinity to zero of an exponential, and then the integral from zero to infinity of an exponential. So let's just recopy down that last step. This is what we had on the previous slide. And we can go ahead and do the integration. Integrating an exponential is easy. It's just the exponential, and then divide by the derivative with respect to t of the argument of the exponential. Since the argument of the exponential is t times the quantity a minus j omega, when we take the derivative with respect to t, we just get a minus j omega, and we need to evaluate this total term at 0 and minus infinity. And similarly, the second term is just the exponential itself divided by the derivative of the argument of the exponential, and we evaluate this integral at infinity and 0. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and plug in. For the first integral, when I plug in t equals 0, I get e to the 0, which is 1, so I have just 1 over a minus j omega, and then I subtract off the term evaluated at time minus infinity. Well, e to the minus infinity is 0, so I just have 0. And then I add in this next term. When I plug in time equals infinity, e to the infinity times a negative a gives me 0, and I subtract off this term evaluated at time equal 1. So I subtract off e to the 0 over the quantity minus a minus j omega. So this turns into 0 minus 1 over minus a minus j omega. I can simplify this a little bit, get rid of the zeros obviously. In the second term, the minus 1 over minus a minus j omega just makes everything positive. It's kind of a double negative, so I have this quantity. To add these two pieces together, I just need to get a common denominator. So if I cross multiply, I have a plus j omega plus a minus j omega divided by the product of these two things to get a common denominator. And now you can see what happens on the numerator. I have a j omega and a minus j omega. So those cancel out and the a's add. So I just have 2a. And then on the denominator, I have four terms. I have a times a is a squared. a times a negative j omega is minus j omega a. 
j omega times a is j omega a, and then finally j omega times a negative j omega. The j and the j make minus 1. The other negative turns everything positive, so I end up with just a, an omega squared. And you can see here on the denominator, again, I have a minus j omega a plus j omega a. Those will cancel, resulting in a final answer of 2a over a squared plus omega squared. So we've just computed the Fourier transform of this double-sided exponentially decaying signal, and we found that x of omega is 2a over a squared plus omega squared. If I plot this, it looks something like this. It's a real and even function. Remember that x of t was a real even signal, so we have ended up with a Fourier transform x of omega that is a real even function. And this will always happen when you're dealing with real even signals in the time domain. You'll end up with a Fourier transform that itself is a real even function.